We've fallen into a trap as travel photographers where we're always seeking out that hero image. But travel photography isn't a hero image. It's food, it's culture, it's architecture, it's the people. Travel photography is a photo story that defines a destination. My goal is rarely to find the hero image. It's to go out and photograph a mood of a destination. And if that mood turns epic, well, then I shoot it. First of all, you're not allowed to make fun of the beard game going on right now. I know, it needs to be shaved really badly. Second of all, we're getting into like a really good routine, I think, here in Tbilisi. Snelly's up there, Jody's here, and we've spent all day working and working out at the gym, and yeah, basically have a really nice routine. Now it's about 6.30, two hours until sunset. We're gonna go grab some food and then shoot some photography. The problem with being photographers is that you rarely eat dinner and it's just because you get distracted by things. We've walked past this area that has some graffiti on it like three times now in Tbilisi and every time I thought if we get a little bit of light I'm going to take a picture there. And just now for a split second there was a little bit of light hitting the graffiti so I got Jody to pose in there and with the 24 to 70 grab a shot that I think is pretty good. Nothing mind blowing, it's simple, but it's pretty nice. And uh, in general, the graffiti in here is really cool. So what we have is a traditional Georgian uh, starter and this is spinach sort of molded with the walnut uh, paste. This one is beetroot with walnut paste. This is eggplant with some sort of walnut paste in the middle and red pepper also with walnut paste. Looks good. So what we've learned is they, they like their walnut like paste. Walnuts. So I'm a massive fan of dumplings of any kind and here in Georgia they have this, which is called kinkali. The waiter told us you have to eat it with paper. You can't use a fork and knife to eat it. We have meat ones, but also on the menu there was mushroom and cheese, so it's not necessarily a meat thing. And um, yeah, it kind of looks like a pierogi mixed with a Chinese dumpling. It's hot, man. It's probably straight out of the boiling water. This is gonna burn me. <laughs> One, it's really good. And two, it kind of tastes almost identical to the dumplings you get in Mongolia. In Mongolia, it's usually goat's meat. This is beef. And yeah, I lived on these in Mongolia. So yeah, thumbs up. And light's already dying, so we gotta eat fast. So one of the things about having three weeks somewhere is you kind of lose your urgency because you know you always have tomorrow. So we went and had dinner, dinner was fantastic. So far the food in Georgia has just been next level. But we need to have maybe a little bit more urgency because um, we were eating there, having a good time, enjoying things, and then we realized that it's probably like 30 minutes until sunset and we still gotta go find the cable car, pay for the cable car, and go up. So we gotta make moves or we're gonna miss sunset. We're back on the Peace Bridge where we were last night. This is eventually gonna be a location I shoot. I think I'm gonna need to come at sunrise though when it's less busy. So maybe over the next week we'll be back here. I think it'll be a really cool spot. Lots of angles, lots of ways to shoot this spot.
we're about to get into the gondola and the funniest thing ever is that on the door it says no smoking, no something else, and then no shishas, no hookahs, which is a shame because the four of us were saying that we were just gonna bring our shisha and take it off and now we can't do that, so. I guess we'll just go up normal. Okay, we made it to the top. <laughs> that was fun. The views up here are crazy, crazy good. But we um, we didn't miss sunset. It just didn't happen. There's just no light right now. But we do think that once the blue light sets in, it might be cool. I mean, the views up here are just rad. So uh, yeah, we're gonna walk around. To the very top, the views are obviously good, but it's one of those things that the best view isn't always the best photo. And it's kind of hard up here because everything's kind of melded down in with the city. All the cathedrals, the mosques, and everything that really stand out from the bottom, they kind of just get sucked into the landscape here. So we're gonna keep walking around, keep looking, but I'm not sure there's the shot that I'm looking for here. But there is people like up on these pillars, these old wall pillars. So we're gonna see if we can climb up one of these things. I mentioned earlier kind of the downside of having too much time is that you don't have any sense of urgency. But one of the upsides is if you mess up, you can always go tomorrow. We saw the top, we asked how to get up there. Some guy told us there was like a little hole or a door to go through, but we didn't find it. So now we've walked basically all the way down to the bottom and no shot. So um, we're gonna keep looking, have hope that we find something to take a photo of, but it's not looking good right now. We found our way onto the wall and uh, it's cool in here. I mean, it's not cool, it's still hot. It's like 36 degrees and we're still dying from heat. But I think that actually the composition and the view works from here because you can see down the valley a little bit, down the river a bit. You can see that lit church in the background. Yeah, I think this might, it's not a great photo, but I think it at least works. Oh, you're already filming Yo, bro, I'm on top of this shit. Damn! <laughs> Good at time lapse, but BVS is one step ahead. BVS is always a step ahead, especially when you're slow. <laughs> Greg's working for free, and I'm still harassing him. I'm setting up the 24 to 70, and this is actually the first time I've ever shot this lens. Um, it looks like pretty even light. I might put on a six stop to get some motion in the car, some light trails. Uh, maybe a two stop grad to get a little bit more color in the sky. Pretty simple shot. So we're all set up here and I like this spot because of the winding river and the S turn and it just really balances. But you know that I love my foreground and I can see up there at the top, there's a viewpoint that we could climb to that would have the same view, I think, but have a castle wall in the foreground. And I think that's gonna be ideal. But I'm not gonna shoot that tonight because like I said, we got three weeks here. So maybe come back another time and shoot that. Maybe at sunrise when it's a little quieter up here. Um, but yeah, we're taking this all in, snapping it off, simple photo, 30 seconds F11, ISO 100. Nice overview photo. Yesterday we talked about street photography a little bit. 
This is like trying to get that city overview. If you spend a lot of time in a city, what you're trying to do is create a photo story. You're not just trying to create one hero image or one epic image. Yes, you want that. You want one epic hero image, but ideally you want that epic hero image to be supported by a whole body of work that includes the people, includes the food, includes the landscapes, the buildings, the architecture, the details, uh, a little bit of everything. So today we're just working on that big open shot, that cityscape shot. And I think it's coming out pretty cool. I wasn't planning on shooting that hero image, but Nelly decided to be super brave and she climbed out on this where the bell tower is and from the opposite side I could shoot straight out and it really gives this massive perspective to the image. It is the hero image I was hoping for at some point on this trip. I love it. There was a challenge. You can see there's these lights. And these lights below, they create a ton of lens flare. And people ask me all the time why I wear a hat. And one, I like the hat. But two, photographers use hats a lot to hold back lens flare, whether it's the sun, or in this case, the light coming up on the castle. If I didn't have the hat to hold in front of the light to bring it down, it would have been totally lens flared and it would have ruined the photo. So the hat saved the day. And yeah, I'm stoked with how that came out. So that's now two days in a row where I thought I wasn't gonna get a photo and then the end of the day something just clicked. And it's one of these things with photography where you almost have to just let it happen. You can't force things. If you force things, you end up taking pictures that aren't great. If you sit and wait and you explore and you take your time with it, you might not get the photo every time, but when you do get it, it'll be a banger. So I'm happy with the way today went, happy with the way George is going in general, and we'll be back at it tomorrow. I'll see you there. Peace.